Hi everyone, before this video begins, I have a super exciting announcement for you guys. This Sunday, November 19th, I will be launching my second channel, The Bird's Eye Report. This is going to be a type of channel that's going to focus on history, geography, geopolitics, and stuff like that. A type of content that I wanted to make for a very, very long time. And uh, I've been working on this channel since May or June. Put a lot of effort and a lot of passion into it. So uh, it would definitely mean the world to me if you guys went ahead and checked it out. Of course, the link will be in the description or in the pinned comments. Some of you may already be subscribed since is going to be a rebranding of the Red Hawk Vaughn's channel, but uh, definitely check it out. It will mean so much to me. The first video is about the formation of Italy. After that, we have videos about, you know, how water affects geopolitics, potential countries that could unite in the future, historical figures like Count Dracula and stuff like that. So I'm definitely sure a lot of you guys are going to be interested in that. So yeah, link in the description and uh, go ahead and check it out. That's all I have to say about that. Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Byzantium for EU4 1.36 King of Kings. So Byzantium is a nation located primarily in the Balkans over here and as we all know in a couple of years historically it's about to lose to the Ottomans and cease existing. But Byzantium has received amazing update in the King of Kings DLC and they were one of the primary focuses in that DLC so playing Byzantium has sorta completely changed in this update. Byzantium has received updates to its national ideas and now they are minus 10% advisor discount and plus 20% improved relations right at the start which is actually pretty important. Then as a finisher we get plus 3 tolerance of the true faith which is amazing for an orthodox nation such as ourselves. And then in the meantime we have some really good national ideas too such as plus 10% goods produced, minus 25% core creation cost, plus 3% missionary strength along with plus 0.3 yearly patriarch authority. Then we have plus 20% reform progress growth, plus 15% fort defense, plus 5% discipline, and plus 15% national manpower making Byzantine ideas now super super strong. Additionally we also start off with the Byzantine autonomy government reform where pretender rebels rise up every time our ruler changes which of course is not very good and then we have the new unique pronoia subjects which I'll talk about more later but basically you don't have to annex those guys and instead you just instantly inherit them once your ruler dies. And then we also have plus 0.5 yearly prestige and minus 25% max absolutism from the reform. And then we have some other unique Byzantine government reforms that we're going to get and unlock through our missions later. Of course, speaking of the missions, Byzantium has received a massive overhaul to its mission tree with three separate branches right here, with the top one right here focusing on sort of removing the initial negative modifiers that we have as Byzantium and focusing on conquest all around us. And the second part right here, once again, focusing on improving our nation mainly economically and this bottom branch right here sort of focuses on the administration and the religion within our nation. So this amazing mission sheet, these amazing national ideas and of course the cool unique government reforms are going to help us have an awesome game as Byzantium. However, that's not the only change Byzantium has received in King of Kings. As you can see right here, we also start off with an additional province, the province of Missambria, which was owned by the Ottomans right at the start. And as you can see, we can release Bulgaria from it. However, I do not recommend this. More on that later. And finally, the most important changes that Byzantium has received in this update are the four privileges that our states start off with this one right here union of churches which gives us some negative modifiers for our true faith and plus one tolerance of heretics and if we revoke it the pope will hate us this is not that bad and we don't need to focus on getting rid of it then we have the deteriorating army which gives us some horrible modifiers to our army most notably the minus 15 percent morale of armies and minus 75 percent fort assault ability we do want to remove this one before we fight the Ottomans. And then over here, the burghers have two privileges. One which gives us plus 200% shipbuilding time, which you might think is really bad, but it's really not going to be a problem. And then this one right here for some negative trade modifiers, but it has a very important benefit, the minus 25% mercenary cost. Really, the only one we want to focus on getting rid of immediately is this one, and we can do it through our decisions. So those are the changes to Byzantium. Really, it's never been harder, but by using this guide, you will have an easy and fun campaign. So sit back, relax, and learn what you need to do as Byzantium. All right, all right, here we are as Byzantium. And like I said just a few minutes ago, the first thing we want to focus on is getting rid of this modifier right here before we go on to fight the Ottomans. And we also need to work on completing this mission, this mission, this mission, this mission, this mission, and this mission down here. So we can do six missions right at the start that we are going to focus on. But first, of course, we're going to go ahead and not set any rivals just yet. This may enable Epirus to ally someone, and that is a nation we want to fight right off the bat. So first, we're going to go into our estate 
states and summon the diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then, even though the clergy starts off with this, we're also gonna give them religious state and clerical advisory council. Then we're also gonna give them right of donations right here. Most importantly, this privilege will give us a huge missionary maintenance discount. Of course, that scales with loyalty. Then we're also going to give them religious diplomats, so other orthodox nations like us, and we have some diplorep. And then we can also give them a clerical education. Next, we're going to give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies, and aristocratic counselors, along with nobility officer rights right here for a general for 40 tradition. And then we're going to give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, and commercial advisory board. Due to this privilege right here, we can't take burger loans, so of course we're not going to be doing that. And then that's it for the estates. Finally, we can seize land. Next, it's time to go into our decisions and take the one that gives us a general immediately and give a donation to the clergy so they gain a bit loyalty. Of course, we're immediately going to put the general that we got in charge of this army right here, and we're going to send it over to Athens. Just like that, thanks to our transports. Then, speaking of boats, we're going to take these two light ships and delete them. We don't need them right now. And we're immediately going to go ahead and hire this super, super cheap free company down here. Then we're going to go ahead and take out a couple of regular loans just like that and start constructing galleys, even though they take three years to build instead of one. Either way, start constructing those boats in all the available provinces. Next, we're also going to go ahead and hire some advisors. I recommend an improved relations or diplo rep level one dip advisor if you have him. I don't, so I'm just going to get this morale of navies guy. Then get a morale, discipline, fort defense, or manpower level one mill advisor. I am going to get this discipline guy. And then I'm going to take out one more loan and hire whichever level one admin advisor, maybe this yearly prestige guy. Ideally, you'd hire an inflation reduction and a trade efficiency guy so you can get the event that can give you 200 admin and 200 diplo points, which is going to be important because we are going to be developing. And now that we've hired advisors, started building boats, started building the free company and started moving this army down here, we can also start focusing on diplomacy. First, we're going to go ahead and start improving relations with the Pope right off the bat. We do want to ally the Pope for some decisions and missions later on. And then we're also going to improve relations with Serbia to focus on allying them. We do want to ally them and get good relations with them for a certain mission as well. With this third diplomat don't do anything and simply wait for December 11th where we're immediately gonna declare on Epirus. You may notice that just a couple of days after you start the game you will be able to take the mission the impending doom which gives us plus 10% morale of armies for 15 years and a bunch of perma claims on the Ottoman provinces. Of course if we're allied to the Pope as you can see down here we also gain another minus 15% merc cost for 15 years so a bunch of awesome mercenary discount modifiers. Don't take this mission just yet because obviously we're not allied to the Pope and because we're not ready to fight the Ottomans just yet. We're only going to be taking this mission before we're ready to fight the Ottomans. Once December 11th hits, you're immediately going to go ahead and declare a war versus Epirus. They shouldn't be allied to anyone by this point. And right now, you can go ahead and set them as your rival and then go ahead and declare for the reconquest of Arta. I got regular claims as well from an estate agenda. Of course, you're going to declare for the reconquest. Don't underestimate the Epirus army. Go ahead and send your army and free company over to Arta. And remember, after you declare, do not engage the Epirus fleet in battle. So leave your boats docked. Don't fight their navy. Now that that diplomat is back from declaring war on Epirus, we're immediately going to go ahead and start spying on Aragon. A couple of months after the game starts, you will gain this event, Confirmation of the Council of Florence, where you can select the first decision right here, where basically we're going to get Orthodox Zealots from time to time that we're going to have to fight. But we will remain open to the support of the West. The other option right here is basically the Union of Churches privilege will be removed from the clergy and we stop getting all those negative modifiers for the Orthodox religion, but we also gain more expensive mercs and every Catholic nation hates us. Obviously, we're not going to be going with the second option right here, take the first option, we stand by our decisions, and basically fight some orthodox zealots from time to time. Once you defeat Epirus, you're gonna go ahead and take the province of Arta for yourself, along with making the rest of them in the province of Cephalonia our vassal. This is because we want to keep their boats around for ourselves, and of course, we're gonna go ahead and take all their money. And that's your first war done. At this point, once you've wrapped up the Epirus war, you can also go ahead and give the nobility right here strong duchies, just like that. This should make Epirus loyal soon enough, even though they will be initially disloyal, it's still not a problem. Now that you've wrapped up this war, you should be able to ally Serbia, which you will do. 
go ahead and royal marry them as well and offer them mill access. We do want to gain more than 150 relations with them. Once that diplomat is back from allying Serbia, you should also go ahead and scornfully insult a papal rival, such as for example in my case Provence, Venice or Florence. I'm just gonna do it on Florence right here, there we go, there's a scornful insult on them. This will help us ally the Pope faster. After this war you can go ahead and set some rivals, I'm gonna rival Caraman right here, Genoa, and then Venice, which is also a Pope rival. Now that this initial war is done, you can go ahead and lower army maintenance and turn off your forts to save some money. Once a couple of more months have passed after you've finished your war with Epirus and done all the good relations stuff with Serbia right here, you might be able to take the mission Reinforce Constantinople if you have a fort defense advisor hired. But in my case, since I don't, I either need to get Constantinople up to 7 dev, get a level 2 mill advisor, a level 1 fort defense advisor, or focus on mill. The easiest thing for me to do right here is hire this level 2 fort defense guy, or just promote one of these guys to a level 2 advisor. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take out a couple of more loans right here in order to hire this level 2 fort defense guy, which basically fulfills two of these requirements right here, and then you will be able to take the mission Reinforce Constantinople, where these options are available. We can either ask the Serbians for help, where they might give us up to 250 ducats, depending on their opinion of us, and in my experience, usually they give you anywhere from 80 to 150 ducats, I actually haven't been able to get them to give me 250 ducats, or you can select the second option right here, where you lose a little bit of tax in Constantinople, but it does get plus 10% fort defensiveness and garrison size until the end of the game, basically upgrading the Theodosian walls, or we can not do anything and gain prestige. I recommend choosing either the first or the second option right here. If you're not that confident with managing your economy right at the start, I recommend going with this one. The money the Serbians will give us will help us pay off some loans, or you can go with the second one right here for some defensiveness. It might help you out a bit in the war versus the Ottomans. Either way, I'm confident in defeating the Ottomans all the way, so I don't really need that defensiveness because we're going to be blockading them either way. So usually the best option to go with here is to ask the Serbians for money. And in one to three months, they will give you that money. You won't get a pop-up or anything like that, so you do need to keep an eye on this right here to see how much money you're gonna get. And at this point, you also may be able to ally the Papal State, which I can totally do. So those are initial two alliances, Serbia and the Pope. Once you've done that, you should also be at more than 20 spy network with Aragon, in which case I recommend claiming the province of Salento, which Naples owns right at the start. Naples is actually most likely gonna be our second war right here, and we're gonna try and do that as soon as this Aragon guy dies and they release Naples, which of course they do release Naples in 99% of the games. So what you want to do right here is click on a Naples province, right click on this and select to mark them as a country of special interest and you're going to do the same with Aragon just so we don't miss that pop up or whatever. And now that we have those two alliances in order, the nations that you need to work on allying are Muscovy right here and Hungary as well. Both nations will want to ally you as soon as you flip them friendly. And then with the guy that was spying on Aragon, you should also work to ally the Knights. That's also a possibility. So your allies are going to be Serbia, the Pope, the Knights and Muscovy and then Hungary is just a possibility, but you should be able to get them most of the time. If you've gotten Serbia and the Pope as your allies, you don't need to worry about the Ottomans declaring on you first. In my game, they haven't declared on anyone just yet, but we're definitely not the weakest alliance chain they can declare on. Because we got our armies, we got Athens' army, potentially Epirus' army, Serbia's army, the Pope, their vassals, so we're good on that front. Don't worry about getting declared on. Around this time, you'll also gain the event campaign into Thessaly, where the first option right here is to lose 150 mil points and convert Constantine into a general, a pretty good general, and we also gain plus 10% siege ability and some other modifiers as well. Or we can choose this second option right here, where he'll become a 524. Obviously, go with this one. This one, it makes us lose too much mil points, and I don't think it's worth it. And there we go. Now, he's a 524. At this time, you can also set your attitude towards the Ottomans as threatened. It might help us ally some of their rivals, most notably be hungry if they're rivaled. If not, it doesn't hurt to do it either way. At this point, you may be able to ally the knights unless they've raided you, which is the case in my game right here. I can't ally them because they raided me, but if they didn't raid you, you should go ahead and ally them. If you've managed to secure some other alliances with the nations that I mentioned, Muscovy, Hungary, and Rhodes, with your free diplomats, you should go ahead and improve relations with your allies and with your subjects. And there's the Ottomans' first war versus the nation of Dulkadir. However, unlike in previous patches, we're of course not going to be immediately declaring on them. In the previous few patches, once the Ottomans declared on someone over in Anatolia, that's 
precisely when we strike, but right now we're not ready. Especially with this modifier right here that the nobles have and with the fact that we don't have enough boats. So, even if the Ottomans go ahead and fight someone, Shandar, Trebizond, Dulkadir, Karaman, Albania, Wallachia, Moldavia, don't worry, right now it's not a concern. Really, at this point, we're not at all concerned at what the Ottomans are doing. What we're waiting for is for Aragon to let Naples break free. After just royal marrying Hungary, now I can ally them as well. If they remain independent, they will help you out in your war versus the Ottomans. If they get PU'd by Austria, don't worry, you're still gonna be able to beat the Ottomans. The alliance with Hungary is really more of a defensive one rather than us relying on them to help versus the Ottomans. But if they don't get PU'd by Austria in your campaign, then that's great you'll have an even easier time versus the Ottomans. Once your boats have finished building, keep building more galleys, even though it takes such a long time. Pretty much in every available province or as much money as you can spend. I did take out a couple of more loans for this. Around 1448 is when you'll want to work on completing these two missions down here as well. Our Tarnished State and Peloponnesian Renaissance. This first mission right here requires us to have debt our provinces 20 times. And this other mission right here requires us to have 30 total development in our provinces over in Morea, which are these three provinces down here. If we develop 20 times, we'll be able to remove the deteriorating army modifier way easier than normally, and we also gain manpower and goods produced. And if we develop Moria up to 30 right here, I'm talking about the entire area, so these three provinces, we'll also be able to spawn the Renaissance right here pretty much without diving that much. So that's what we want to work on. Of course, if you can complete this mission before the Renaissance has spawned, don't do it just yet, wait for it to spawn. So what you want to do is activate the Encouraged Development State Edict right here in Morea and go ahead and start developing these three provinces to a total of 30. Something else that you might want to do is activate this icon right here if you have the Patriarch Authority. However, most likely you're going to be doing that after you've dubbed these up and after you've consecrated a metropolitan. So that's what I'm going to do in my game right here. Simply start developing. There we go. One, two, one, two, just like that. Don't waste mill points on this because we are going to need it for upgrading our army. And you can keep track of how much you've developed right here. Six times, as we can see, current dev 24. So let's develop a couple of more times, just like that. There we go. Now we've dubbed up 12 times and... The total dev of Morea is 30, which means we can take this mission for the Renaissance, but we're not going to be doing it just yet, because the Renaissance has a spawn. At this point, you can consecrate Metropolitan, and we've gained a little bit of Patriarch Authority. Right now, I can also Royal Mary Muscovy, and pretty soon I'll be able to ally them as well. This is once again mainly a defensive alliance. Now that Muscovy has finished their war with Novgorod, and that I scornfully insulted them, I can go ahead and ally them as well. And there we go, these are pretty much your alliances. Of course, you may have also been able to get the knights, whereas I couldn't do that. Now I also just got an event for admin or patriarch authority, I took the patriarch authority, and once you do that, I do recommend getting the icon of Christ Pentocrator for even more dev discount, which will enable you to complete this mission and possibly this mission easier. However, if you've already advanced pretty far down this mission or this mission, then I recommend getting this icon right here, the icon of St. Michael, which gives us plus 10% manpower recoveries speed and plus 5% discipline, but more importantly, after we get an icon and take this mission, the effects will be doubled for 15 years, which means all of these right here are twice as good. If you're gonna dev, it's not minus 10%, it's minus 20%. If you're gonna get this guy, it's plus 10% discipline. So, if you haven't started devving yet, I do recommend getting the dev icon. However, if you're devved already or more than halfway through, I do recommend getting the icon of St. Michael, which will help you out in your next few wars versus Naples and versus the Ottomans. That's exactly who I'm gonna get since I've already devved quite a lot. After you do that, do take this mission immediately, we will gain the modifiers immediately, just like that, a very nice mission, and if by this point you've managed to ally Muscovy, you'll also be able to take this mission right here, where a very nice event happens, and we gain 25 Patriarch Authority and a bunch of Orthodox countries like us. Additionally, Diplo annexing Orthodox nations will no longer incur a Diplo rep penalty. And there we go, that's some very nice Patriarch Authority right there. Once you've dev Morea up to 30 development total, there's no need to keep developing here because these provinces are pretty expensive, or at least more expensive than some other ones. So go ahead and turn off the Encouraged Development State Edict in Morea and go ahead and activate it in Thrace. And we're going to be devving the province of Missambria right here, now the new cheapest province, as many times as we need in order to complete this mission right here. In my case, it's just eight times. Remember, don't dev and mill. 
There we go, I've dabbed that six times, I just need to do it two more times. And this is precisely what we're waiting for while doing all of these things at the Neapolitan Succession event where Aragon lets Naples become independent. This happens 99% of the time. In my time of playing U4, I've actually seen Aragon keep Naples only once. And after that happens, here's what you're gonna do. You're immediately gonna go ahead and declare on Naples right here while they have no allies because in the month that Aragon let them go for free, they won't be able to get any allies. Or I've also seen a couple of times where many months have passed and Naples still haven't gotten any allies. Even if they do get allies, you could still declare on them, but it does sometimes happen that they ally someone like Castile, France, or Austria, which of course will make it impossible to fight them. Now, here's once again where the important alliance with the Pope comes in, aside from our missions. We actually can't really beat Naples that easily by ourselves due to the negative army modifiers that we have. But by declaring on Naples and calling in the Pope with the promise of land, we'll be able to do it very easily. In this war, it's not really that important to take as much as we can. We really want at least one province right here, mainly to be able to take this decision right here, where as you can see, we need 100 total dev to take this decision. But due to this mission right here, we'll only need 75 dev. So by taking one or two provinces from Naples right here, we'll be above 75 dev and we'll be able to take that decision. So as soon as Aragon lets Naples go, declare on Naples and call in the Pope with the promise of land. Definitely make sure to actually give the Pope land though. You do want to keep your alliance with them. And there we go. There's the declaration. Be careful when naval invading so you don't get wiped. Let the Pope engage Naples first. After something like this happens, basically after Naples is sieging down Rome, then you can go ahead and land your army. A couple of years into the game, probably before you've declared on the Ottomans, you will gain the event the Ottomans see paying tribute, where basically this first option right here is we need to remind the Ottomans to pay us money or else we'll release that Orkhan guy as a pretender uprising for them. Or you can choose the second option right here where that guy will remain in Constantinople, basically he's some sort of our captor, and we gain some Diplo points. Choose this first option right here since there's really no downside. You're either going to get money from the Ottomans, and if they don't give you money, we're pretty much going to spawn a pretender stack in their capital. As we can see, the Ottomans have refused to pay us tribute, so we can choose this first option right here where we lose some manpower, but a massive pretender stack spawns in their capital. Or you can choose the second option right here where you want to back down. Definitely choose this first option, it will hurt their manpower a little bit. Either way, once you finish your war versus Naples, here's what you're gonna do. And this was an easier war for me, usually easier than the tribes I've had so far. Usually it takes a little longer and you do have to do a couple of battles. Make sure though, when you're fighting Naples, to have the Pope and their boys attached to you because if you go 1v1, you'll probably lose that battle. Either way, once you're ready to peace out Naples, go ahead and take one to three provinces for yourself and then give the Pope a couple of provinces as well, just so they like you. Then you can also get war reps and some money and stuff like that. But make sure to give the Pope land as well. And there we go, that's your war with Naples done. Now with this, not only have we secured an expansion route into Italy, which of course is a region that we're interested in, but more importantly, we are over 75 dev. Now that we've done that, it's time to go back home and finally prepare for a war versus the Ottomans. Now that you've finished your war with Naples, the Renaissance may have spawned by this point, in which case, if it has spawned, just like in my game over here, which actually it spawned in Naples, funnily enough, then you can go ahead and take the mission Peloponnesian Renaissance, where we'll gain 90 support for the Renaissance in the area of Morea. As we can see, there we go, it's pretty much a 90 in all of these provinces, and we won't have to dev push for the Renaissance itself. Now all we need to do, if you haven't done it already, is complete the mission of Tarnished State, which requires us to have dev 20 times. In my game right here, I'm just gonna bump up Messambria twice, and there we go, I can go ahead and take it. This gives us the manpower, goods produced, and revoking deteriorating army will be easier. Just like that. Now the requirements to revoke it are us to have only 75 dev, a 15,000 sized army, and a level 2 mill advisor, which is gonna be super easy. So we need to be ready to take this decision as soon as we're ready to declare on the Ottomans. And what we're waiting for right now is for the Ottomans to fight someone in Anatolia specifically, or to not fight anyone, but have their armies be in Anatolia. As we can see in my game right here, they've declared on Albania and Venice, which will most likely happen in your campaign as well after they wrapped up a war or two in Anatolia. Either way, don't declare if they're fighting this war. That means their armies are over on this side, and we want to have their armies over on this 
this side so we can blockade the strait and basically siege everything down over in the Balkans. So we're not gonna take this decision just yet, we're not taking this mission just yet, we need to wait for them to fight someone here or not fight anyone, but keep an eye on their armies and make sure that they're here. Around this point you'll also want to check and see who might help you versus the Ottomans. As we can see Serbia and Hungary would help me with the help of favors. So if you need to curry favors with someone, do it now. Right now I can also ally the knights, since I no longer hate them, they should be able to help out versus the Ottomans as well as we can see, and their navy is pretty important. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna curry favors with Serbia here, with Hungary, and with the knights in order to get them to help me versus the Ottomans. If not, you can just call them in with the promise of land and not actually give them anything. If you have 10 favors with an ally or most of your allies, you should also start spying on the Ottomans. This isn't so we can build a claim on them, no, we have cores, this is so we can get sieges done faster. Before you declare on the Ottomans, move your armies to Constantinople. If you get an event like this where you can give an additional malice to the privilege we already have, taxes exemptions for Latin merchants, choose one of these options right here. Do not remove it, we still want the mercenary discount. I'm going to choose the second option right here since I don't want them to become super disloyal. If you're scared about money, as we can see, the money situation at this point really isn't that bad. I'm only losing about one ducat per month, you should be around the same. We've paid off a lot of loans if the Ottomans gave us money, if Serbia gave us money, and the war versus Naples. By the time you're ready to declare on the Ottomans, you should have about 15 to 20 galleys. And now the Ottomans have finished their war versus Albania, and they're actually not looking that strong, but their armies are still here. What I'm gonna wait for here for about one year is for their armies to either move this way or for them to attack on someone over here so I know for sure their armies are over here. For your tier 2 government reform, if you haven't fought the Ottomans yet, I recommend Strength and Noble Privileges. If you have, you can go with the unique one, Reform the Pernoia system. I'm gonna go with Strength and Noble Privileges because I'm about to fight these guys. And in my game, the Ottomans just declared on Trebizond and Theodora right here. A pretty easy war for them and of course the Ottomans or pretty much whatever AI will always declare on the easiest nation that it can fight. And even though it's such an easy war and they'll wrap it up quickly, I know that their armies are over here because they did have a 10k stack here, which I saw using my bones, and another 12k stack crossed from over here to over here, which is almost their entire army. So, once the Ottomans do that, once they declare on someone here, or that you know their armies are over here, now is the time to strike. So, what you're gonna do is go, you're gonna go ahead and raise army maintenance and turn on your forts, and you're gonna go ahead and take the mission Impending Doom, which gives us another Merc discount if we're allied to the Pope, which we should be, along with morale of armies. And then, since we've beaten up Epirus, we can also take this mission right here for Diplo points. You may think that by full annexing them, the morale of armies and navies is better, but like that, we don't actually have access to their navy. Either way, you can go ahead and take that mission too. Next, we need to work on completing this by building up our army and getting a level 2 mill advisor, which I'm gonna do by taking out a couple of loans right here. You're gonna be doing the same and then hiring whichever level 2 mill advisor you want. I have this manpower guy, so I am just gonna upgrade him. And then what we're gonna do is hire a bunch of mercenary companies over here. Make sure to get the cheapest ones that you can. Don't go for the palace guards because they are normally more expensive. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hire the Hydukes right here. They got a three shot guy. That's pretty good. Then I'm gonna go for these guys right here. And then whichever one of these two guys has a better general. Of course, these are the cheapest ones. There, there are more. I'm just gonna go for this one because he is a four shock five movement guy. And there we go. Three mercenary companies and these two provinces right here. By this point, you should be Miltek 4, just like the Ottomans. Once your mercenaries have been hired and you got a level 2 mill advisor, you will be able to take the mission Repair the Army, where we lose all of those negative modifiers. That's perfect. Now we need to pop out our navy in the Sea of Marmara here and make sure to allow friendlies to attach. And we're waiting for our mercenary companies and army to get full morale. Then we'll be declaring. Now that my armies are full morale, I am ready to declare, and you'll be doing the same. So simply go ahead and declare on the Ottomans for the reconquest of Gallipoli and call in whichever of your allies will come in. In my game, Hungary actually doesn't hate the Ottomans anymore, so they're not willing to come in, but I am going to show you that this is possible with just a small ally like Serbia or maybe Serbia and the Knights. So that's what I'm going to call in, and there we go, there's the reconquest on Gallipoli. We're immediately going to move our entire army stack over to Gallipoli, and once that stack is there, we'll immediately barrage. If the Ottomans are in a war with someone else, you don't need to assault the fort. However, if the Ottomans are not at war with someone else, you do need to assault the fort. Make sure to keep ship consolidating though. Once you start your war with the Ottomans, you will get this event where you can gain stab, fort defense, or morale of armies. You can go ahead and check your morale compared to the Ottomans, and of course it will be weaker, so you can go ahead and get whichever of these you want. Since we're not really expecting to fight the Ottomans over here, you can just go for the stab. 
During this war, you might also gain this event for this awesome general, Manpower and Sailors. I already have pretty good generals, so I really don't have use for him. And there we go, with barraging and maybe with assaulting very quickly, the Ottoman fort will fall and you are free to take control of everything over in the Balkans. Now the Ottomans can no longer cross. As we can see, they've already wrapped up their war versus Trebizond, but there is no way they can come over here, unless they get mill access, which really, they shouldn't. And even though the Ottomans did manage to get mill access and cross, even though they don't have it anymore, it seems everyone up here has cancelled it, I did just defeat them over in this province with the help of all my companies and most of my main army. I just left a 1k stack on this fort so we don't lose the progress. But now that they've lost, they have nowhere to retreat to. And as we can see right here, they just got stack wiped. Very easy. Now this army can get stack wiped as well. They have nowhere to go. And it's as simple as that. If this does happen, you are free to cross into Anatolia. Now that I've done this, Hungary and the Pope are willing to come in. You don't even need to call them in. I just did it, you know, to show it off. But as you can see, with just me, Serbia and the Knights and our vassals, we were able to do all of this. And I was even a Miltech below them. I just got Miltech 5. Now that everyone else has come in and has started to cross, I have also crossed onto Coachelli, which I will also naval bombard once I get the mill points. Don't be afraid to stack all mercenaries and armies in one province right here in order to deter the Ottomans from walking a stack into you. Keep in mind, this strategy is valid no matter who the Ottomans' allies are. In my game, it's AQ and Granada. In your game, it could be Tunis and Gazikumuk. It really doesn't matter who the Ottomans' allies are. Of course, after the Ottomans are pretty much already dead, you can go ahead and immediately get rid of some of these mercenary companies right here because we are losing quite a bit of money during this time. I'm gonna get rid of all of them except the free company. To save some additional money during this war, you can go ahead and transfer occupation of the occupied forts over to your subjects and then just transfer it back. And now that the Ottomans have been 100%ed, here's what you're gonna do. And keep in mind, even if you don't occupy Anatolia and don't 100% them, by just getting the Balkans right here and sitting on ticking war score, you can comfortably get around 70 something to 80. But either way, once you defeat the Ottomans, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and get war reps and all of their money. Keep in mind though, if you don't have a really high participation, you won't really get a lot of that money. In my case, I will get about 400 and something ducats from this. Then after you get war reps and all of their money, here's what you should do. You should go ahead and get all of your forts back over here with the exception of a dear name and then we're gonna do the following but before we do the following let me say something right here some of you may be thinking why not get this and this and then this and this then provoke bulgarian separatists so all of this can go to bulgarian separatists and we gain all of that land for free for our subject bulgaria if we release them and this is a pretty old strategy i know lots of you know it and every time someone comments about this, but in my experience, this never works. When Bulgarian separatists rise up here, the Ottomans always find a way to get mill access to get over here and beat them up. So I've tried that four times already, it's never worked for me, so I do not recommend the Bulgarian separatist strategy. Either way, once you get war reps and all of your money and all of your cores except for a Dirne back, you should also go ahead and take these three provinces right here, even though we don't have claims on them. In order to get Biga, I'm just gonna take a little less money, and that's your first war done. So, all of your cores back except for Adirne, these three provinces, money and war reps. If of course you're a more experienced player and you feel comfortable handling the economic situation as Byzantium, you could take less money and more land. Either way, for newer players, this is the peace deal I recommend. And that's your first war with the Ottomans, finally done. After the war is done, you'll get some nice events, the Phoenix Rises, renaming of some provinces, stuff like that. After that, focus on paying off your debt, lowering war exhaustion, and completing additional missions such as reversing the downfall, where we gain additional permaclaims, money, manpower, and some other nice modifiers. Once that war is done, you can definitely go ahead and delete this fort and this fort. When this war is done, you should look to ally Austria if you can. Additionally, after this war is done, we're finally gonna be releasing Bulgaria. This is so we can reconquer these cores of theirs. Once we've wrapped up the war with the Ottomans, like I said, we're gonna focus on stabilizing our situation a little bit, mostly economically, and then we're gonna look to expand in other areas, and our next areas of expansion after we fought the Ottomans are possibly Genoa, Venice, basically the nations that we border in the Balkans, or whoever is located over here, maybe Naples, if they haven't been PU'd by Castile, which in my case they have, so that's off the table for now. Around this point, make sure to lower autonomy wherever you can, and try knowledge sharing to make some money as well. 
Once a little bit of time has passed after your Ottoman war, you should continue your conquests immediately by declaring on some of the nations around you. Like I said earlier, Venice, Genoa, Serbia, if you got a province that you managed to border and broken your alliance with, or maybe someone in Italy, if you do have the opportunity. In my game right here, it's actually easiest to fight Venice since a lot of their allies won't join and all of my allies will join. So I'm simply going to declare for the province of Durazzo, let's say right here, and call in Serbia, Hungary, and the Pope. Because I have a yearly inflation reduction and a trade efficiency guy, I was eligible for radical reforms and here it is, by firing both of those guys you can get 200 and ammo and diplo points. Since these advisors are pretty good, I actually do recommend keeping them around. So what you want to do is first fire them, then get this. Now of course first I need to take admin deck right here so I don't go over and not get all of the points, but either way, there's the points right there, and now I can just go ahead and hire these advisors back. Either way, once you hit Admin Tech 5, it will be time for your first idea group, and in a massive expansion-focused campaign such as this, where we're going to be blobbing out a whole lot and playing with subjects heavily, I do recommend the diplomatic ideas for your opening idea group as Byzantium. In your game, the Ottomans may start collapsing as well. In my game, they just lost a war to Poland, where Poland took these two provinces, and right now, they're fighting Genoa as well. And they have a lot of separatists. This is completely normal. Even if someone takes provinces that we want from the Ottomans, it's completely okay. We're just gonna fight those people that took the provinces instead of the Ottomans. And once you go ahead and defeat Venice, and by the way, I got lucky that we managed to siege down the province of Venice itself, here's what you're gonna take. In your initial war versus Venice, obviously, once again, just like with the Ottomans, you're gonna focus on war reps and all of their money because they are rich and we are poor and then you're gonna take whatever you want over in the Balkans mainly so what I'm gonna be taking is these couple of provinces right here pretty much everything that I can after I've taken war reps and all of their money with this I also gain a border province with Serbia which means I can attack them even though I did not take a border province with them when fighting the Ottomans so this is another way to do it however if you can't take something over here to border Serbia then you should definitely take something like this over here from the Ottomans earlier when you were fighting them. And that's my war with Venice done. Your second war may have been versus Venice, it may have been versus Genoa, versus Serbia, Bosnia, anyone over here. Now that this war is done, I will be breaking my alliance with Serbia. Keep in mind that they may get declared on during this point, but that's okay. Around this point is when you should also focus on completing this mission right here, City of the World's Desire, by developing Constantinople up to 40 at least. You can do this by also concentrating development and doing that peace deal thingy where you gain their guys as dev in your lands, or you can also straight up just develop. Now that I've developed a bit and expanded my land, and the burgers are finally more loyal than they are influential, I can revoke the privilege Reliance on Republics for the plus 200% shipbuilding time. Of course, whenever you can, you definitely need to go ahead and do that. And there we go. Now we have just two more bad privileges we need to remove. The one for the Merc discount and the one for the trade modifier. At this point, after I've broken my lands with Serbia, Hungary is calling me in versus Bosnia. And this is actually pretty good since I can go ahead and occupy some stuff over here and they'll most likely give it to me. There we go. The war ended. Hungary took two provinces for themselves and gave two provinces to me. Of course, the most important thing here is the gold province over here. That's why we do want to fight Serbia pretty soon. Either your first or second or third war after you fight the Ottomans. So there we go. Now after this, after you core up this province, full stated, activate encourage development and dev it up to 10. Income shouldn't be a problem anymore. Of course, after you revoke that boat building privilege, it is time to start really constructing your galley fleet. Byzantium does also have a unique naval doctrine, the Tactica right here, which gives us plus 20% galley combat ability, so even stronger than free oarsmen, along with plus 15% ship disengagement chance. Definitely choose that for your naval doctrine. Of course, after we remove that one burger privilege just earlier, now we're eligible to take burger loans as well, which means we can finally start really building up our nation. You should be doing the same. The first thing you actually want to focus on right here is building churches after you get the money to do so because we do want to end the union with churches right here. And for that, we do need five churches. Of course, make sure to be building marketplaces as well. Super important. Now, of course, at this point, Epirus and Athens will be over 200 relations and you can totally go ahead and annex them or make them the unique subject type and annex them when your ruler dies. Of course, this subject type is great because it doesn't take up a Diplo slot and we won't be using Diplo points to annex them. We'll just inherit them when their ruler dies. But at this point in the early game, it's actually not good to have these subject types because we lose a lot of force limit when we make those subjects. So it's really good for later on in the game when you have massive subjects and you're massive as well. But for now, in the early game, don't do it just yet. Instead, just give the nobility the integration policy and you can go ahead and annex Athens and Epirus whenever you're ready. And there we go, because I had cores on both of their provinces, that's an insta-annex. 
after you do that and after you fought venice for some provinces over here you will be able to triumph for greece as we can see my starting ruler just died and there we go pretenders of course will rise up that will happen every time while you have this government active for your tier 3 government reform once again you have a couple of options you could either go centralized monarchical bureaucracy which you already know the benefits it is pretty good then you could also go expanded royal court for reform progress growth and getting through these other ones faster you could also go representatives of the crown because we are going to be playing pretty heavily with subjects at least in the early game right here where we want to reconquer some vassal scores or you could also go with the unique one right here restore the master of offices where the statesman advisor gives us minus 0.1 monthly autonomy change per level basically if he's a level 5 he gets minus 0.05 and then we also have plus one possible advisors and minus 15 percent cost of advisors with rulers religion this is pretty good as well you could go with either four of these all of them are really good in my opinion but for the sake of being unique right here let's go with the restore the master of offices for this playthrough right here although you won't make a mistake choosing either of these four now that I've cored up Kosovo over here, and now that it's a state, I'm going to activate the Encourage Development State Edict and develop this province to 10 production. You should be doing the same in your campaign. And of course, after you've developed it up to 10, you should go ahead and lower autonomy. There we go. Now our economic situation is great. Once you develop Constantinople a little bit like I have, and once you build a marketplace over there, and once you gain more than 40% trade power in the Constantinople trade node, you will be able to take this mission right here where that building, the marketplace, gets upgraded to a trade deal and we gain some dev over there and we gain some dev reduction and local trade power and if it's a level one center of trade it gets bumped up to level two obviously it's already level two so we'll just gain some more production a really nice mission right here that you, you should take immediately and then once we do this mission as well all the other buildings over there will get upgraded as well giving us some other awesome bonuses as well so really nice three missions right here along with this one or Constantinople. We're definitely focusing on completing them. Either way, once your truce with the Ottomans runs out, it's immediately time to declare on them once again, where we're going to reconquer all of Bulgaria's cores, get our core back, and pretty much take everything over in the Balkans. If someone else has expanded over here, like Poland or Serbia or Wallachia or Venice or Genoa, it doesn't matter, then you're going to take as much as you can over in the Balkans and focus on expanding in Anatolia. Luckily in my game, I have quite a few provinces to take over here, so I'm just going to declare a reconquest for this province right here, and once again, call in these allies even though in your second war you don't really need allies around the time you're at war with the ottomans for your second time or after that war you will be able to finally take the decision integrate galata where this negative modifier right here gets removed from constantinople and will start making a lot more money definitely go ahead and do it immediately and then once you completely obliterate the ottomans in your second war against them here's what i recommend taking the peace deal is pretty simple take whatever you can over in the balkans by giving everything back to bulgaria and taking your remaining core and whatever else is left and then take whatever else you want over in anatolia it's just two provinces for me so there we go the ottomans are no longer present in the balkans that's a full core return for bulgaria all of our cores meaning a dear name albania that they took earlier on and two more provinces in anatolia and that's your second war with the ottomans done now it's time to chill with them and look for other areas of expansion once again in the nations that we border maybe some minor anatolian nations maybe over in italy maybe some of the balkan guys when you do stuff like this, you'll usually get some nice events like the Phoenix Rises right there. Once you give Bulgaria all of their cores back, which I pretty much have aside from these two provinces right here that Poland took, which is not a problem, let's say basically I gave all of them back, you can then land a Pronoyar over in Bulgaria. And these are the modifiers that they get. Pretty much a nation can only have a limited amount of Pronoyars governed by the number of Pronoyars modifier, which you gain with idea groups, government reforms, and for every 100 land force limit. That means these guys don't cause diplo relations. So based on that, we lose five force limit from a Pronoyar, but that does give them 10% force limit, 20% manpower and sailors, and they also gain these bonuses right here. Basically, a regular one of these guys gets annexed when the ruler dies and then if we want to annex them we need to turn them into a regular one and there we go just like that bulgaria is a pronoyar and they no longer take up a diplo slot even though this does make them slightly rebellious and we do lose a little bit of force limit and if you find the bulgarian guy is pretty old you can also immediately look to placate these guys and get them below 15 percent liberty desire so you can retract the right to inheritance so when he dies, we inherit them. Don't do this if they're not super old, though. There's really no need. This does make them quite disloyal. 
For your first stage ability, you can go with Justified Wars. And actually, the Bulgarian guy just died, which was uh, quite lucky with the timing right there. But that's pretty much what happens after you make a nation of Pornoyar and then, you know, revoke that right to inheritance or whatever. That land is instantly yours. Be careful how you use these guys. Only get one or two of them at a time, max. Around this time as well, and you'll also want to work on finally taking these two decisions right here. Obviously, for one, we need to fulfill these requirements, which you may be lacking due to trade. But for ending the Union of Churches, you do need to stop being allied to Catholics during this point, which is why I recommend dissolving any alliances you may have with Catholic nations. At this point in my game, I've finally gotten the clergy over 60 loyalty, which means I can take this decision right here to end the union of the churches. Basically, these bad modifiers right here, the minus 4 tolerance of the true faith and minus 10% strength versus heretics get removed, but the Pope also hates us, which isn't really a problem because we really don't care about the Pope anymore. Now, you can go ahead and re-ally any Catholic allies that you may have had. I'm gonna ally Austria in my game right here. Once you wrap up your second war with the Ottomans, you can go ahead and continue your conquests anywhere that you like. In my game, I'm gonna declare on Ragusa right here, even though they're allied to Venice and the Pope. And after white piecing Venice and the Pope, I can go ahead and full annex Ragusa, just like that. At this point, I'll also re-ally Hungary. You might think allying Hungary isn't a good idea here, and you'd be right due to the fact that we want to take over their provinces in the Balkans, but the thing is, I'm gonna use this alliance with Austria and Hungary to help me beat up Poland, which has Lithuania. Of course, you're gonna be doing similar things. Maybe you in your game can ally Poland to help you beat up Hungary or something like that, or you can use any of these guys to help you beat up the Mamluks if they expand over here in this region. It's totally up to you what sort of alliances you'll use, but pretty much you ally with some guys to help you beat up other guys, and then you get rid of that alliance, fight them yourself, you know the drill. Right here, I'm immediately gonna continue my conquests by declaring on Serbia. And now that I've defeated Serbia, I'm gonna go ahead and full annex them, just like that. Once you take over 7 out of the 9 provinces over in these two areas right here, you'll be able to take the mission Vengeance of Bar, which gives you a permaclaim on the entirety of the Balkans and on the Carniola area, which is this right here, pretty much modern day Slovenia. Then we'll also gain a stab discount, gov cap, and the event Reconquest of Serbia will happen, where these are the options right here. We can either take this one for minus 10% CCR and minus 5 years of separatism for 30 years, or we can do this second option right here, which for 25 years will give us 0.05 monthly autonomy change, minus 10% AE impact, and plus 10% nobles loyalty along with 100 diplo points. I recommend choosing this first option right here. By now, I think you all can see what we're doing at this point. We're pretty much cleaning up and fighting the smallest and weakest nations that we can over in our region, while at the same time preparing for some more major wars. As you can see, I've pretty much wiped out all the small nations that I can fight, with the exception of the knights here, I guess, which I might be declaring on them soon, if the Mamluks don't get to them first, and it seems like they will, but after you've cleaned up some of the small guys, and in the meantime you've been fighting the Ottomans, then you could look to fighting some of the big guys, which in my game are Poland and the Mamluks. Of course I haven't fought Kerman or Chandra yet, because they're allied to the Mamluks. Around this point, you'll also want to build up around 10 lightships. Right now I've also re-allied the Pope, and I've allied Tunis as well. Now that I'm making more than 7 ducats from trade, and now that my income is more than 12, all I need to do is hire a level 2 trader or a skill 3 diplo advisor. As we can see, I already have a trader, so I'm just gonna upgrade him to level 2, and there we go, we can now take this decision and Latin favoritism, where we're gonna gain some Merc cost increases, but that's okay because right now, we're not using Mercs anyway, and that was a bad privilege to have. And there we go, by this point, we've removed all of those negative privileges, and now you can go ahead and take this mission, Economic Independence, where we gain either Trade Efficiency or Galley Combat. Either way, now that that's all done, I'll be continuing my small wars still by declaring on Genoa right here, and I'm gonna call in Hungary and Circassia to help out. We're pretty much gonna focus on these provinces right here that they've taken from the Ottomans. Once you hit Admin Tech 7, it will be time for your second idea group, and for your second idea group as Byzantium, you're of course gonna go ahead and take religious ideas. Extremely, extremely powerful for a religion-focused nation such as ourselves, us being Orthodox, expanding into non-Orthodox land, and it'll mesh very well with the religion-focused national ideas and government mechanics and missions that we already have. Both of these ideas are really good for a massive blobbing and expansion campaign. And now, since I have quite a lot of war score and this is the only provinces I want, I'm gonna go ahead and take them along with war reps and money from Genoa. I already pieced out Venice, I'm not piecing out everyone else. Once you hit Admin Tech 6, make sure to start building workshops in the high value trade good provinces that give you more than 2 income per trade good. Or sorry, I should say the trade good that has a value higher than 2. 
or a price. At this point, I can see that Poland is in a war versus the Livonian Order, Denmark and Norway, which is a pretty sizable war for them. And additionally, Bohemia and Wolgast, their allies, won't help them, but my allies, Hungary and Muscovy, will. So I'm gonna declare a conquest for the final provinces over in the Balkans that I need for a certain mission. Basically, the Bulgarian cores. What I'm gonna do actually is not call on my allies so Bohemia doesn't join, and then in a couple of months once that alliance gets broken, when Bohemia doesn't join, then I'll call in Muscovy and Hungary. For your tier 4 government reform, you should of course take Grand Land to the monasteries. An excellent tier 4 government reform once again for a heavily religious focused orthodox nation such as ourselves. It gives us yearly patriarch authority and some clergy loyalty. And right now I have about enough Warscore versus Poland right here to take what I want, which is gonna be these provinces right here, along with war reps and some money. And that's my war with them done. But I'm not gonna be keeping all of these provinces directly, instead I'm also gonna release the nation of Wallachia right here, which means I can then ask my ally Hungary to give these two cores back to them, and then I'm also gonna give some additional provinces over to Wallachia, such as this one right here, this one right there, and that one right there. This is a little roleplay type of thing. You can of course keep these provinces for yourself if you do end up conquering them. After you take all of these provinces right here, basically all of Bulgaria scores, whether that's in your second war versus the Ottomans or in a war versus someone else like I did with Poland, you will be able to take the mission Reconquer Bulgaria, where we gain Bulgarian as an accepted culture, a general with 50 tradition, which also has plus one shock depending on his stats, and a permaclaim on Wallachia and Moldavia, along with some dev discounts. Now it's time for my final war versus the Ottomans, as we can see the Mamluks and Kerman have expanded quite a lot over in Anatolia, but either way, it's time to wipe them out once and for all. You may think it's a good idea to vassalize an Ottoman like this and reconquer their cores, but I don't recommend it. There we go, very quick and easy, and the Ottomans in my game no longer exist. Once you've consolidated all the minor nations over in this region like I have, and only major nations are left, and by the way, Kerman isn't major, but they do have strong allies, it is time to move on to the major nations. I just fought Poland, and now now it's time to fight the Mamluks. The Mamluks will most likely expand quite a lot over in this region because the Ottomans will be weakened, but in my game it's a really good time to declare on them because none of their allies except for Fezzan would join. So there we go, there's my declaration on the Mamluks. Once you build all of the relevant buildings in Constantinople right here, I just built a barracks finally, and once you have more than 40 dev, you'll be able to take this mission right here, where all of those buildings get upgraded to the next tier of those buildings, just like our marketplace got updated from this mission, and we also gain some other additional bonuses in Constantinople. As we can see, now we have a basilica instead of a regular church, a trade depot instead of a marketplace, training fields instead of barracks, and a counting house instead of a workshop super super powerful. Once you do that you should work on completing this development focus mission where you need to bump up Morea seven times and build a marketplace and a dock or a shipyard and then a center of trade will get created over there. So definitely work on completing that mission. And now that I have quite a bit of war score versus the Mamluks and I think I'm ready to peace out, this is what I'm going to be taking. I'm going to take all of the provinces down here that they've conquered except for Rhodes because it actually has a fort that I haven't occupied and I don't have enough transports to get it. And then I'm going to start taking stuff over here, maybe something like this. That's quite a lot of provinces, quite a lot of aggressive expansion and overextension. And then after that, I'm also going to get some war reps and some money as well. And that's my first war versus the Mamluks, done. After you expand over here in this region, no matter who it's against, you will be able to take the mission Asia Minor, where the culture in Smyrna will become Greek, the provinces in Aden and Hudavendigar will slowly begin converting to Greek or Pontic via an event, and it tells us that we need to remain at high stability to speed up the process. We also gain further permaclaims on this region right here. After you unlock this national idea or this idea from religious is when you really start converting. Right now I'm also gonna diplovassalize Circassia. Right now, even though Muscovy has called me into this war and I'm helping them out, I can notice that Kiraman's ally, the Timurids, won't help them out, which is also my ally. I managed to ally the Timurids earlier on as well. These are my alliances right now. So this is a perfect time to declare on Kiraman. I'll also reset my truce with the Mamluks, so I'll be able to fight them earlier as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and declare for the conquest of Adana, for example, and call in Tunis as well. And there we go. And actually, Muscovy just beast out Chanda right here and gave me this province, which is really nice. And there we go, that's an easy white piece on the Mamluks. And now that my war with Kiraman is done, I'll be taking about half now, and I'll be taking about half later, since I can't full annex them either way. Just barely. Either way, why waste a lot of points right now, when I can just divide it up? 
Once you're on 35 provinces over in Anatolia, you will be able to take the mission Avenge 1071, where we gain plus one missionary strength versus heathens until the end of the game, along with Gulf Cap, a permaclaim on the Mashriq region. Culture conversion will extend to the entire Anatolia region, although it will be slow, and it'll also trigger the following event right here. We could choose this first option right here to gain Turkish as an accepted culture, or if it's already accepted, gain 100 diplo points and every Turkish culture province loses separatism we will focus on assimilating and events converting greek provinces converting those provinces to greek will fire more often or we can enable the turkish janissaries merc company basically don't choose this third option either go with the first one or the second one depending on whatever you want it totally is up to you in my game i just got 50 patriarch authority which enables me to take this mission right here you will be able to do this after you also get 50 patriarch authority build a church in constantinople and revoke union of the churches which we did quite a while ago and basically will unlock the legitimization of the dynasty estate privilege for the clergy which if above 33 percent patriarch authority gives us the following bonuses and and Constantinople can get its church building upgraded if we haven't upgraded already through that other mission right there. If it's already upgraded, we gain some tax, and then we also unlock the reformed Byzantine monarchy tier one government reform, which is a lot better than the current one we already have. So, a secret mission right here, technically, something that you may not think too much about since it's religious focused and stuff like that along with these other missions down here, but super, super important. It's one of the most important missions that we need to do. And there we go. Now we're the reformed Byzantine monarchy government type. We can still do the Pernoyas, but we no longer have those other stupid modifiers from that earlier Byzantine monarchy reform. Now we have minus 0.05 monthly autonomy change, minus five years of separatism, minus 20% culture conversion cost, and plus one yearly absolutism. Now that I've built a dock as well over in Morea and did all the other requirements, there we go. We'll create a level one center of trade over there and we can gain an admiral or two years of trade income right now i'm pretty good with admirals so why not get that money and there we go there's another center of trade a mission that i forgot to mention right at the start is the hexamillion wall right here which is super easy to complete we just need to have a mill advisor and develop corinth up to four production but we're basically we can gain a castle over there or relocate the castle from Morea over there or focus on our capital i don't have the third option because i deleted this one in Morea. this one really isn't too relevant at all you don't need to build another castle in corinth when fighting the ottomans you don't need to move the one from Morea over there you can just choose this other option right here we're upgrading the theodore erosion walls will be less expensive not really too relevant for the start even though it's super easy to complete i should mention that you should keep doing this decision whenever you can basically upgrading the theodosian walls to level three once again this is not something that's really relevant for our initial war versus the ottomans so that's why i didn't mention it but you can definitely go ahead and bump it up later on in the game no need to spend that money before fighting the ottomans of course make sure to keep taking out burger loans whenever you can after you can take out burger loans of course there we go there's another center of trade that i can upgrade there's another one right there over in trebizond and then it's uh pretty much our capital constantinople at tier three at a certain point during the game once you have a big army and have 20k manpower or 80 percent of your force limit usually it'll be 20k manpower have a level two mill advisor and have grown by 10 states you will be able to take another super important mission down here the theme system where we gain 150 mil points and we reveal the branching missions over here basically we can preview them an event happens where we can choose certain options and this is the event right here we can unlock the theme system of government reform which gives us minus 10 percent state maintenance plus 25 percent manpower in primary culture and accepted culture provinces along with these other bonuses down there and that is the tier 5 government reform the theme system basically giving us all the bonuses that i just mentioned along with the nobles land rights no longer making it cost max absolutism and now instead it gives us plus 10 percent land force limit this is the unique tier 5 government reform for byzantium i do recommend going for it i do think it's more fun and more unique than any of the generic ones we already have right here so pretty much till tier 5 we have five unique government reforms the only one i haven't taken is reform the pernoia system right here which i really don't think it's that good of course it does have special use cases where you can take provinces from a nation then create a client state from that so pretty much let's give this example right here if you're low on admin or something like that let's say we're fighting caraman we take these provinces but before coring them we create a client state over there then change them into a pernoia then revoke their hereditary status and then basically we annex them for free once their ruler dies so that's pretty much the use case once again i think the pernoias are more useful for later on in the game where we're much stronger the only time you should really use it in the early game is to annex bulgaria another mission you'll be able to take right after this is restore the byzantine navy because you should have a pretty large navy by this point we gain an admiral along with some ship bonuses 
After colonialism spawns, you should focus on developing it in the province of Macedonia, which will also enable us to complete this mission right here, where we basically need to have a marketplace right there and 25% development in the province and of course by deving colonialism there because it's super super cheap to dev as you're gonna see right now there we go you can activate encourage development you can bump it up a couple of times just like that then expand infrastructure and if you activate the icon of christ pantocrator right here it'll become even cheaper so look it's at 15 dev and it's still only costing us very little i'm gonna dev it up in dip and mill here primarily since i'm working on an admin idea group right now but super super cheap and it will enable you to spawn colonialism super super fast and also complete this mission right here once you've upgraded the theodosian walls to at least tier 2 right here and completed these other requirements some which are just possibilities you will be able to take the mission defense in depth where you gain 10 army tradition and depending on how you completed this mission if it's by merc companies you gain merc bonuses if it's by army size you gain army bonuses and if it's by upgrading the theodosian walls you gain fort defense Complete it in whichever way you want to. This is just the way I did it in without too much thinking. And that's your top three defensiveness missions done. And whenever your truce with the Mamluks expires after fighting them to take stuff over in Anatolia, or maybe they didn't expand in Anatolia in your game, and now it's time to fight them for your first time over in this region, it is time to declare. I'm going to go ahead and declare for the conquest of this province right here, and I'm going to call in my ally the Timurids to help out. And once you completely obliterate the Mamluks in the war where you're gonna fight for this region, whether it's your first or your second one, here's what I recommend taking. First, I recommend that you take any province over in this region that they may have that is not a Syrian core. So if you hover over Syria right here, you'll see all the provinces that they have cores on from Antioch to Rabat to Azraq to Saida right here. So don't take those provinces just yet. First, take anything that they might have that's not a Syrian core. In my game, it's these provinces right here. Then take just one province that is a Syrian core and then you can focus on taking the rest of the things over here that they have centers of trade on such as Alexandria, Rashid and Dumyat and then I'm also going to take Cyprus and Rhodes and that's my second war with the Mamluks done. Quite a lot of aggressive expansion over here but still a coalition shouldn't form and then you don't have to take money or war reps anymore just do that in your first war. And there we go that's my second war and your first or second or third war with the Mamluks done whichever war where you're taking one Syrian core. After that, you're going to go ahead and release the nation of Syria. And in your further wars versus the Mamluks, you're going to go ahead and reconquer all of these juicy, juicy cores. Either way, now that I've taken all of the provinces that are islands over here in the Aegean Sea, finally after taking Rhodes, you may have gotten Rhodes for free due to Separatists, maybe right at the start of the game, you'll be able to take this mission Repulse the Republics, where we gain some dev and trade power. And by around the time you embrace colonialism, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off as Byzantium and started off by navigating their new start with the really bad estate privileges that were granted to us, and of course we had to navigate through those by securing alliances with certain nations and stuff like that so the start is a little bit different although after we get our first war with the ottomans done it's pretty much the same either way we started off by focusing on removing that one bad army privilege right there and after that we focused on allying the pope and serbia for missions and hungary and muscovy as defensive alliances and of course the knights as a fifth possible alliance as well i've tried this strategy five times for me it has worked every single time and i have been able to get those same allies every single time the pope serbia hungary muscovy and the knights except that i couldn't ally the knights this time that you saw in the video but after that i was able to do it either way after securing those alliances and doing some initial missions right here we immediately declared on epirus on december 11th right here vassalized them and left them alive in this one province and then as soon as aragon let naples go you should have declared on naples right here with the pope's help and taken some provinces for yourself to help you in your expansion in italy later on and of course to help us complete that dev mission sooner then you should have dev this area right here this province right here to complete various other missions and of course you should have been building boats even though the boat building time is so massive but after that when the ottomans were fighting someone here or when their army is over here you should have striked them and completed your first war against them when we retook all our cores and some provinces in anatolia release bulgaria second war versus the ottomans take everything in the balkans third war with the ottomans keep expanding in anatolia and pretty much you know the drill we're focusing on pummeling the ottomans every single time our truce is up after we fought them for our initial time while at the same time waiting for a truce with them to expire fighting other small-ish nations in the balkans like albania serbia bosnia herzegovina Ragu 
Ragusa if they exist, Venice and Genoa if they still have provinces over here, maybe if you want to expand into Wallachia, Moldavia as well, and of course expanding into any Anatolian Beyliks that might have been there until you take care of the Ottomans. And like I said, by the time you embrace colonialism, you should own most of the Balkans and of Anatolia, and you may have already started your expansion elsewhere, such as in the Pontic Steppe, over in Egypt, in the Mashriq, or in Italy, depending on the opportunities you had in your campaign. And you're pretty much the same size as you would be in any other Byzantium run in any previous patch. Of course, this might not be that big of a size uh, by 1520, but I do feel like it's completely obtainable for newer players. Of course, more experienced players can be a lot bigger by now, but I feel like this pace is pretty clear and pretty easy to follow along with if you're a newer player and if you're struggling with Byzantium for this latest patch as well. But of course, after getting rid of those initial hard times as Byzantium, after taking care of the gold mine, your economy should have been booming and you should have continued to follow along with your mission tree right here, which is absolutely incredible with this update. This entire top part of the mission tree all the way to these three missions basically focuses on us expanding throughout the entirety of the Roman Empire borders. These missions are very clear and very easy to follow along with. You just need to conquer some things to give you claims on further things and stuff like that, along with some nice bonuses. The second part of the mission tree right here from Atarnish State and Peloponnesian Renaissance to Warehouse of the East focuses on us developing our nation economically mostly, developing provinces, building buildings, upgrading stuff and stuff like that. So you'll definitely be focusing on this as well with the buffs to Constantinople are especially amazing. And then this bottom branch right here, like I said, focuses on some administrative aspects and religious aspects of our nation. Most importantly, after you complete these two missions early on, this mission right here is super, super important. Some of these missions down here are super important for government mechanics and stuff like that, along with the theme system and some of these other ones right here. Definitely focus on completing these as well by just doing a regular campaign as Byzantium, maybe focusing on the Eastern Roman Empire or maybe the entire Roman Empire. You'll definitely have a very, very fun time completing this mission tree. Definitely make sure to follow along with your missions very very carefully because they are super super powerful of course by this point you shouldn't have only been focusing on expanding through warfare or through vassalizing or releasing nations to reconquer their cores you should have of course been focusing on the economic aspect like i just said through the missions but also not through the missions just by doing regular expansion economic focus stuff as well after you got the gold mine over in kosovo from serbia or from whoever had it your economic situation should have really stabilized and you should have started constructing a ton of buildings most importantly in the provinces in which they will get upgraded in, such as in Constantinople and Macedonia, for example. And I'll show you what I've built in my game so far. And of course, in your campaign, when you do it, you should have looked to have built something similar. These are all the marketplaces that I built pretty much in all of the center of trade and estuary provinces that I've had up until now. Make sure to build these buildings and every province that gives you more than two trade power right here. As we can see in my game, the Mamluks haven't built any in these super important provinces. So that's why I'll start construction on them in these right here. Then, of course, you should have looked to build a bunch of production buildings as well in all the high-value trade good provinces. Make sure to build these in every province where the trade good has a price higher than 2 or where it gives you more than 0.2 ducats. For example, I'll build it in Trebizond. Even though this trade good is cheap, it still does give me a lot of money. And don't worry about the fact that, for example, you're going to build a workshop in a province like this that has a high-value trade good, but it gives you very little money. Later on, you're naturally going to be developing those provinces when you have spur points and when the manufacturers come in as well that income will shoot up dramatically. So even if you build a workshop right here and you're not getting money from it right now, this is major preparation for later on in the game. Those are the buildings that I've built. Of course, I definitely need to start constructing a lot more. Then of course, you should have been building quite a few churches. I build them in every single province that gives me more than 0.1 ducat a month. And then of course, any other necessary buildings that are required for missions at or that you need, you should have built as well, such as a couple of army and navy buildings and stuff like that. And of course, courthouses when you run out of governing capacity. Of course, you should have been focusing on upgrading centers of trade as well. I've upgraded every center of trade, even the one that we spawned right here to level two, at least the ones that I can. And it seems that all of them actually have been upgraded, except for this one, which I need to develop the province a little bit for. And then the one in Constantinople is at level three. And this is what my income is looking like by now. I think it's pretty decent. Gold income is pretty solid. I am spending a lot on armies because I have just constructed two armies right here, as we can see. So this is the income by this point in the game. You should aim for something similar. And speaking of armies, I have two stacks by now. 25 410 both of them that's pretty normal 
regarding this combat wraith right here this is my main fleet over here as well two heavies 35 galleys and seven transports i do need to get my transports up definitely and then i have a couple of light ship fleets protecting trade over here in ragusa for a mission and in constantinople because i didn't know where else to put them but of course you should work on building some light ship fleets as well definitely focus heavily on galleys for the mediterranean but make sure to pop in a couple of heavies in there as well and after this point, you will continue to expand in the same directions we've already been expanding in. Of course, like I said, by following along your mission tree and your claims, it does sort of start to outline the borders for the Roman Empire, as we can see right here. We got some claims in southern Italy, in the Balkans right here, in the Carpathia region, in the Mashriq region, in Anatolia. So by continuing to follow along these claims, it'll pretty much tell you where you need to expand. Of course, make sure not to pummel one region too hard. For example, I wouldn't declare on Karaman, then the Mamluks, then his and Kaifa, then QQ, then Samsky. Okay, don't focus all the time in one region make sure to diversify your conquests between different regions on the map basically different cultures and different religions to avoid coalitions as we can see these guys are super mad so my next war is probably going to be over in this region or this region and then focus your expansion opportunities hit the balkans hit the caucasus the mashriq then maybe over the maghreb then in italy Make sure to move around your conquest opportunities like that. And of course, by the end of the game as Byzantium, your focus should be to own the entirety of Britain, France, Siberia, the Maghreb, Italy, the Balkans, Anatolia, Egypt, Mashriq, Caucasia, the Pontic Steppe. And of course, if you want to go a step further than the Roman Empire, then of course, I do recommend focusing on the Low Countries, South Germany, Carpathia, and Persia and Arabia as well. So sort of this entire region right here. If you're stuck in a certain region and you have way too high aggressive expansion, you can definitely move on into another one by building claims manually you don't necessarily have to wait for your mission tree even though it will guide you towards where you need to conquer as we can see once we conquer provinces in southern italy we gain claims over in the maghreb after we conquer provinces in northern italy we gain claims on southern germany and stuff like that basically you see how this goes and of course these top missions don't only give us claims they also give some very nice modifiers like the ones i'm hovering over right now make sure to take a look at them in your game as well and of course later on in the game you will want to restore the pentarchy that is down here finally at the end and mend the schism where every country in europe that likes you that is catholic will actually flip to orthodox super super powerful missions don't neglect either branch of the mission tree i can't stress that enough so for expansion what i would do in my game right here is fight hungry for some of these provinces in the balkans then i would expand over here then move here and basically expansion like i said by moving around your conquest in different areas of expansion of course, as Byzantium, don't forget to focus on the super powerful great projects that we have and that we're going to conquer later on. Your focus in the first 100-ish years of the game shouldn't really be monuments. It should be building buildings. That's how you should be spending your money in order to snowball harder. But of course, later on in the game, you will be building the Hagia Sophia up to tier 3. Super nice monument, especially for us as Orthodox nations. Then you have the Parthenon. Make sure to build that up as well. The Rila Monasteries is excellent for Orthodox nations as well, along with the Mausoleum at Hari Karnasas right here make sure to build all of these right here this one right here is not too relevant don't focus on building that up too much but definitely do the pyramid of cheops super super powerful pretty much utilize any monument that you can take advantage of as an orthodox or greek cultured nation for example because some of these monuments of course you can't use such as for example the holy city of cairo one this is what we took for our first two idea groups diplomatic and religious ideas these two idea groups help us in expanding a whole lot this one with managing coalitions managing subjects taking more provinces potentially getting some junior partners as well and of course religious as an orthodox nation is a no-brainer when you finish it you'll be using the deus volt cb for less aggressive expansion and since we're orthodox we're expanding all the time in the non-orthodox provinces you're going to be converting all the time and i really don't know why i don't have the automatic missionary button just yet even though this is 136 so after you've taken diplo and religious you don't really need to focus on military things as byzantium and really as any nation in single player even though i so often do recommend mill idea groups but if you think your armies are weak and you're not going to be able to take on let's say mega spain or mega france or mega great britain or something like that in your campaign you can definitely pick up a few mill idea groups as well however what i would do in my campaign right here after taking diplo and religious is i would pick up trade ideas to max maximize the money making opportunities even more and then after trade for my fourth idea group i would take admin ideas which are of course super powerful for expansion as well the governing capacity tech discount culture stuff 
advisor stuff, and most importantly, the CCR are very helpful for expanding rapidly later on. So for your first four idea groups, I recommend Diplo Religious Trade Admin, and after that, it's totally up to you, but you could pick up Mill Idea Groups then. If you don't want to go Trade Admin for your third and fourth, then you can go with Mill Idea Groups for your third and fourth, such as Quality to buff up your boats as well. And then after you take Quality, you could go with either one of Offensive, Defensive, and Quantity. The choice is totally up to you. This is what we took for our first five government reforms. Of course, we flipped from our regular Byzantine monarchy to the reformed Byzantine monarchy, which is more powerful, and you definitely want to do that via your missions. After that, for your tier two government reform, we do have the unique reform, the Pernoia system right here. However, I don't think it's really that powerful in the early portion of the game. Later on, when manpower isn't really a problem, and we're going to be playing more heavily with Pernoias, basically subjects that you want to insta annex, and I would definitely use that on Syria, for example, you could flip to this one right here to help you get more Pernoias. Keep in mind that these guys reduce land force limit. Either way, one of those two for your tier 2 government reform, I recommend this one for earlier, this one for later. Then for tier 3, like I said, all of centralized monarchical representatives, expand the royal court, and restore the master of offices are great. Take either of those four that you want, you won't make a mistake with either one of them. Tier 4, grant land for the monasteries. Tier 5, the theme system, of course. And then for tier 6, I do recommend restoring the Senate as Byzantium, which will enable the Parliament mechanic, and I do think it gives some very, very nice bonuses. I do definitely recommend going with that one for your tier 6 government reform. For tier 7, I recommend meritocratic recruitment. For tier 8, I also recommend this unique one right here that I can't pronounce for plus 15% production efficiency, which is so important when you unlock it. Monthly autonomy change, global prosperity growth, and stuff like that. So definitely go with this unique one. For tier 9, if you're still playing heavily with subjects, basically releasing nations, reconquering their cores, and then annexing them, or releasing pronoias or client states in order to annex them for free, then you can go with Leviathan. If you're playing more independently, then take the six books of the Republic. And then for tier 10, and tier 11 all of these reforms are super super nice take whichever one you want and need at that point in the game you won't make a mistake with either one of them and after starting off as byzantium in probably one of the hardest patches there have been for them by the time you embrace colonialism your game should look a little something like this if you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is gonna go like mine this save file is available for all youtube members in the save games discord channel and you can continue playing as byzantium from this date forward let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you like the content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.